Welcome back again. Uh, this slide shows a quick review of the statements of logic. Same slide that we finished up just previously talking about conditionals. Conditional statement, remember, follows the if-then format where the if is the hypothesis and then is the conclusion. So if is the P, then is the Q. So we say P implies Q. And again, I do encourage you to memorize the theorems and definitions and postulates and embrace that if-then pattern. In statements of logic, though, not everything is, is say, stated in the positive. Uh, we can negate something, okay? And the negation is the opposite of a statement. Now, don't confuse negation with the converse uh, being the reverse, but the opposite. So, if it is raining, that might be our P statement. If it is raining, then we might say it is wet. So, rain implies wet. P implies Q. If it is not raining, then it is wet. Well, it is not raining. Here's our negation, and we use the tilde for the not. So we'd say not P implies Q. So this is our negation right here, the not raining. Kind of looks like a smiley face now. But the negation, the tilde, not P. So we have P implies Q, rain implies wet, versus not P implies Q, it's not raining, implies it's wet. So that's the negation. That's how we negate something. Okay. Now the converse, a little different. Converse is the reverse of a statement. We're going to switch the order. Okay. So a statement might be P implies Q. Right, we had our definition of a midpoint. If a point is a midpoint, then it divides two congruent state, or then it creates two congruent segments. Well, the converse, we flip this. The Q goes first and the P goes second, so Q implies P. For example, if you live in Milwaukee, then you live in Wisconsin. So if you live in Milwaukee is the P, and then you live in Wisconsin is the Q, right? Living in Milwaukee implies Q living in Wisconsin. So then the converse would be Q implies P. So Q is you live in Wisconsin. So the converse would be if you live in Wisconsin, That implies, pardon me, then you live in Milwaukee. And we know that that is probably not true. But that is the converse. So sometimes the converse is not true, and there's another example of that where it doesn't work. Now the inverse that's also a little different than the negation. It's a little different than the, than the converse. Again, we'll start with our statement. P implies Q. If you live in Milwaukee, then you live in Wisconsin. There's our P and then our Q. So our inverse is not P implies not Q. So we negate our hypothesis and we negate our conclusion. That's the inverse, okay? So essentially, the inverse is, is if you don't live in Milwaukee, then you don't live in Wisconsin. That's not P implies not Q. And that may not necessarily be true either. There's a lot of places um, in Wisconsin that aren't necessarily in Milwaukee. So just notation, inverse, the order stays the same, but we negate both our hypothesis and our conclusion. So why don't you go ahead and write that out. Make sure you've got that in your notes. Um, 
and we will move on to the contrapositive. The contrapositive, again, our statement, P implies Q. But the contrapositive, we take both the inverse and the converse. So we flip the P and the Q, okay? That goes there and that goes there, and we negate both of them. So the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. So if our statement is, if you live in Milwaukee, then you live in Wisconsin, our contrapositive would be, well, can you do that? Can you write the contrapositive? I will leave that to you to bring me in your notes and show me what the contrapositive of, of you, if you live in Milwaukee, then you live in Wisconsin is. But here's a hint. The contrapositive and the original statement are always logical equi equivalents. And what that means is, if our statement is true, the contrapositive will always be true. And of course, it also means if the statement is false, the contrapositive will also be false. They're logical equivalents. So we'll see here that the statement and the contrapositive um, are interchangeable. Uh, they mean the same thing. They have the same logical equivalents, the, the level of truth. Uh, so you can flip them around. So we will do chains of reasoning. So we'll be linking things, if this, then that, then that, then that, then that. We'll be stringing things together. That's a chain of reasoning, and it must be unbroken. So here's an example of a chain of reasoning. If you do your homework, then you get good test scores. If you earn good test scores, then you get a high GPA. So you can see here, here's our link is the good test scores. This, be, this was P implies Q, and now getting good test scores became our hypothesis. So Q implies, then you get a high GPA. Uh, we call that X, Q implies X. If you get a high GPA, you make your parents happy. So X implies happy mom and dad. So what is our chain of reasoning? Oh, we we'll keep on going. If you make your parents happy, then you get a later curfew. So you, that implies you get to stay out late. That's kind of nice. So the conclusion is, if you do your homework, you get a later curfew. So you guys can go to your book, uh, take a look at sample problem two on page 46 for more information about chains of reasoning. So take a look at that, take a look at your chains of reasoning. And we will practice this in class, so that concludes this particular video, and we will see you in class.